Hey y'all, I'm Bob. And I'm Carrie. And we're with the Brenneman Group, a real estate firm in Charleston, South Carolina. And I actually grew up here in the Charleston area and went to the College of Charleston, graduated with a master's degree in history. I worked as a licensed tour guide in the city of Charleston for several years and also worked as a the head researcher at the South Carolina Historical Society. And I am a College of Charleston graduate, uh, 1998, and a resident of Charleston for the last 26 years. Today, we're going to give you guys a tour of one of the eight boroughs in Charleston, and we're going to start with Radcliffe Borough. And Radcliffe Borough is actually bordered by Calhoun Street, King Street, which is right behind us, Radcliffe Street on the north part of the city, and then all the way over to Smith Street. So Radcliffe Borough was actually originally farmland here in Charleston, and it became a neighborhood, essentially, in the early 19th century, Thomas Radcliffe purchased the property and had it surveyed in the late 18th century. And then it became a, they basically started setting up lots and blocks. And he passed away in 1806. And so his wife, Lucretia Radcliffe, took over. And she began to continue the development of Radcliffe Borough. The biggest land donations that she gave was to this church here. Today it's called the Cathedral of St. Luke, St. Paul. The building itself was built in 1816, but it was originally known as the Third Episcopal Church of Charleston. And it had a nickname called the Planters Church because many of the rice planters who came to Charleston and had homes here in Charleston used this church as their home church when they were here in Charleston. All right, we're strolling in front of uh, 135 Cumming Street. Uh, it was built in 1830, and uh, Carrie's going to tell you guys a little bit more about the history of it. So the house was built by a silversmith or a jeweler named William Whiteman, and he actually built it as an investment. So it was built as a tenement home, which is another word for rental property, basically. And so originally this was a rental home, but today it's actually used as a single-family home. All right, so we're continuing our tour of Ratcliffe Borough, and we're uh, walking on kind of the edge of Ratcliffe Borough right now. Uh, over to our left is Ashley Hall All Girls School, and to our right is 89 Warren Street, which was built in 1823. And Carrie's going to tell us a little bit more about that. So um, the man who lived at 89 Warren Street was named um, Chancellor Benjamin Duncan, and he actually, after the war between the states, was the Chief Justice of South Carolina. And what's really interesting about this and the fact that we're on the edge of Radcliffe Borough is that this home actually overlooked what was then uh, Cummings Creek. So there was actually a creek that ran through Radcliffe Borough at one time. We're here on Warren Street and Warren Street was actually named for Sir Peter um, Warren who was a British Admiral, young British Admiral, who lived here in Charleston for a while. However, Lucretia Radcliffe, her maiden name was Warren and so Probably Warren Street got its name after Lucretia Radcliffe because, of course, she um, helped develop this neighborhood. So if you look at this um, house here on Warren Street, what's interesting about it is you can see where the stucco has kind of faded away off the brick. And back when these homes were built in the 18th and 19th centuries, um, the idea was that brick was a poor man's building material. And so many Charlestonians, you know, wanted to build their homes out of Stone. That was actually the thing to build your home out of. However, there is no stone here in Charleston because we have no mountains. We are the low country. And so a lot of the um, homes were built out of brick because we have a lot of mud. And so they built the homes out of um, brick. But in order to make them look a lot fancier, they would stucco over the brick homes and then score lines in the stucco to make it look like stone. So if you can see there, that's an earthquake bolt. And so basically what that is is Charleston had a major earthquake in 1886, so we are sitting on a fault line. And many of the homes kind of sort of fell apart. And so what they were able to do is they would kind of put the homes back together, put brick in the places that needed to be put back in. And then they took these steel rods and they ran them through the floorboards or the floors of the homes from one end of the house to the other. And then slowly they would take the bolts and they would turn them over time to eventually pull the house back together. And so that's what those are. Those are called earthquake bolts. And this one's kind of basic, but what's cool is you'll see them all throughout the city, and so now you'll know what, what they are. Calhoun Street actually was renamed um, Calhoun Street to honor the great nullifier, uh, John C. Calhoun. 
And then over here on the left, we have the oldest Methodist structure still standing in Charleston and the third oldest church structure in Charleston. Today they use it as a school and they've rebuilt a larger version of the church on the other side of um, Calhoun Street. And then um, over here, this is 220 Calhoun Street, this home here. And this home is a good example of an old beautiful home that was built originally as a single family resident, but today it's what we would call um, apartment building or tenements back in the old day. And so you see a lot of this because we're very close to the College of Charleston, so a lot of these old homes have been turned into apartments and are often rented out by college students. So we're walking in front of uh, 214 Calhoun Street, was uh, built in 1835. I've been to some parties here in college, but Carrie's going to tell you guys about the history. So um, this house was built as, basically it was built by a carpenter for his own home, um, Frederick Schaefer. This house is a great example, as you'll see a lot of in Charleston, of Greek Revival architecture. So it's a really a beautiful home that's now been, just like all the other homes on this area, um, turned into apartments. Marion Square is a six and a half acre uh, park that's used for the farmer's market on Saturdays. I threw a lot of frisbee here when I was in college and I'm going to throw it to Carrie and she's going to share about the history of Marion Square. So originally this was the parade ground for the military arsenal that was built here in Charleston and then from 1843 to 1922 um, the arsenal became the military college of the south which is known as the Citadel. But in 1922, they moved the Citadel to a different location on uh, the Charleston Peninsula. And today, it is just basically a, a square that's used for the pleasure of the citizens of the city of Charleston and visitors as well. And the building there is actually now home of the Embassy Suites uh, Hotel. Are right, y'all uh, excited to give you guys kind of a tour of my favorite part of Charleston, or at least uh, Radcliffe Borough, Upper King Street, where all the hot new restaurants and shops, an area that 10 years ago wasn't like this. Uh, we're passing by right now Paul's Chop House, which in my opinion, one of the best chop houses in the United States. It's just great service, great food, and the Hall's family does a great job of uh, you know, entertaining people. As you can see as we're walking up Upper King, there's just you know tons of restaurants. Right. Yeah, um, so we're walking up to close for business, one of our favorite neighborhood spots in Radcliffe Bro, and we're going to go in and have lunch. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good to see you. It's good to see you, it's good to see you Ben. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for having Absolutely. us, man. Thank you. I'll have a water. Yeah, ice water will be awesome. We're a craft beer bar. We have 42 draft lines, um, and we pretty much only serve craft beer. We try to feature local beers as well. Um, it's definitely our top priority, um, but we go through over a thousand different beers a year. Ooh, what looks good to you, Carrie? Pork slab is awesome, right? You wanna try the pork slab? Yeah, I'll do the pork slab and you can do whatever it is that you want. Maybe a cob salad for lunch. Cold beers? That's the fun part about being here is trying all their different beers. Yeah, they have quite a beer selection, and don't they? We could do like a flight. Maybe we could do a flight. Let's do that. Okay, what, looks like a little sampler? Yeah. We source everything from as many local farmers, um, bakeries, uh, that sort of thing as possible. So we have a bakery right up the street, um, Brown's Court, that we get all of our bread baked fresh every day. Uh, we use Ke Keegan Fillion Farms for our meat that we get for, you know, chicken, pork, that sort of thing. Our main food dish that we like to do probably be our pork slap. It'll be a, a fried pork cutlet with um, beer braised, barbecue, uh, Swiss cheese, pickled green tomato, and a mustard seed mayo. Let's try this. Chicken salad's really good. There's something in it like coriander, but it's good with the grapes. That's an interesting sandwich. It's a, it's a piece of pork cutlet Yeah. that's fried, and then the barbecue's fried with cheese on top of it. Oh my gosh. It's very good. Yum. Before it was closed for business, it was uh, Revolve, which was a wine and cheese bar. It did very well, kind of became more of like dancing and cocktails and that sort of thing. And it was a little bit away from what the uh, original owners wanted it to be. They pretty much put a sign on the front door that said closed for business. And they said, we're going to open it up as something else. So when it came time to name this beer hall, uh, they basically looked through a list of stuff and the only thing they both circled out of, you know, like 20 or 30 names was Closed for Business. So that was the pumpkin. It's good. This is always a fun thing to do at Closed for Business. 
this is good. It has like a... Cheers, babe. Mm. Nothing like a flight of beer for lunch. We're a beer pub, you know, we're, we, we have pub food. We're nothing fancy. If you just do it right and you do it simple, you know, you avoid pretension you, you, and you, you have a good time. And it's about going somewhere where you have good food, but it's also about going somewhere where you can enjoy the company of your friends. Thanks, Bob. That was good. You're welcome. It was good. We'll have to come back here. I'm off to an inspection. Here on to inspection, I gotta go show houses, and I guess this will wrap us until we go out next time. Yeah, it was good. Look forward to it. All right.